page report, 32,000 footnotes documenting where the information, there are no conclusions, they're just facts. That 7,000 page report has remained classified. I have read it. We have put out a 450 page summary, which is public. And in that summary, we indicate that those cases that the administration spelled out where torture produced operable intelligence was simply not so. We elaborate on that in the big report, and my hope is that one day, not too distant, that report will be declassified so the American people can actually see. But I wanted to ask you some questions along these lines. Um, it's my understanding that the set of talking points were prepared for a press conference for the Attorney General on November 22, 2005. The talking points ask whether, and I quote, aggressive interrogation techniques employed by the administration yielded any valuable information, end quote. And in the margin next to this question, you hand wrote one word, yes. What information did you have that the Bush administration's aggressive interrogation techniques were effective? Senator, I'd, I'd have to see the document. I, I don't recall. Um, All right, I mean, sitting that's here, it's fair been, enough. It's been a we, long, why don't long we do this? Time. I'd be happy to share the documents with you. Um, I took these pages out of my binder. I think they Fair were enough. there, so I wouldn't have to pause. And I, but um, let me just hold up that answer. Sure. And we'll get you the documents on that because. Um, it, let me do the next question. In December 2005, after the passage of the Detainee Treatment Act. You advocated that President Bush should issue a signing statement to accompany the law. In an email you sent to Stephen Bradbury and others, you said the signing statement would, and I quote, this is your quote, help inoculate against the potential of having the administration criticized sometime in the future for not making sufficient changes in interrogation policy in light of the McCain portion of the amendment. This statement clearly and in a formal way would be hard to dispute later, puts down a marker to the effect that McCain is best read as essentially codifying existing interrogation policies, end quote. To be clear, the context was that earlier in 2005, the Justice Department's Office of Legal Counsel had concluded that CIA interrogation tactics like waterboarding and sleep derivation did not amount to cruel, inhuman, or de de degrading treatment. I read your email as advocating a continuation of these interrogation techniques and worse, saying that Senator McCain's amendment actually codified them, which it did not. Is that true? And doesn't it mean that when you wrote this in email, you were condoning waterboarding as lawful? Senator, I'd, I'd want to see the email again. I, I, I don't feel comfortable commenting on documents that aren't in front of me, but I, I can say this, that um, I do remember. My staff has the documents great. here. They can bring them down that'd to be great. You right that, now. Thank you. That'd be, that'd be okay. wonderful. And then I'll put aside this part. Okay. You'll have the documents because they're right. more. And I'll go on to the next subject. No, that's fine. I'm happy. Is that to, all right? I'm, I know. I want I'm, you to look at I, I, the documents. I, I'd like to just know what I'm talking about. Um, my, I re my recollection generally, I can, you know, from 12 years ago. Eric, bring him the sure, documents, thank please. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, Eric. <laughs> um, my recollection generally working on the um, Detainee Treatment Act, um, Senator, was that at that time, after Razul was issued by the Supreme Court, uh, there were a lot of habeas petitions coming in from detainees at Guantanamo Bay, um, some brought by my friend Neil Kachel. Uh, and there was an effort by some in the administration, along with many on Capitol Hill, to try and provide a regime for the processing of those claims in a way that 
would conform with the Youngstown ideal of Congress and the President acting together in unison. And uh, that Senator McCain and Senator Graham put together legislation that emphasized that not only was torture unacceptable, which it always had been under U.S. law, but the cruel and human and degrading treatment was also unacceptable. But let under me US help you law. here. I know from the documents that you worked on the Graham effort. Yes. For example, a self-assessment that you wrote said that you, quote, helped coordinate the legislative effort on the Graham Amendment within DOJ and in consultation with DOD and others. That's absolutely right, Senator. I sure did, and I'm proud of it because we managed to come up with a bipartisan bill that I think passed this body with over 80 or maybe 90 votes, I don't remember, um, which did two things. One, affirmed this country's commitment to prevent cruel, inhuman, and degrading treatment. And second, which provided a regime that was agreed by the Congress and the President on how uh, Guantanamo detainees um, should, should have their claims processed. Except, after you read the documents, just so you know, the conclusion that we come away with is that when the bill on the McCain Amendment was about to be voted on, you forwarded press articles explaining uh, what having these two provisions together meant. That was the McCain Amendment prohibiting torture and confining it to the Army Field Manual. Yes. And the Graham Amendment, uh, which would bar habeas, uh, in other words, um, a detainee could not use the habeas corpus right uh, to file in a court of law and challenge uh, their conditions of, deten of uh, detention. So that was looked at as offsetting uh, McCain, but basically preventing habeas corpus from being used, and of course it was overturned by the court. Senator, you're absolutely right uh, that it uh, was eventually litigated, as all these things are. Um, there was a bipartisan effort, and it was between the Department of Defense. Department of, De Department of Defense wanted congressional approval for something so that they knew what the rules would be. They were desperate to have some congressional involvement and investment in this process. And as a lawyer, that's all I was, I was a lawyer for a client, right? I was advising them on how to go about doing that legally in conjunction with Senator Graham's office and others. Um, and it was a bipartisan effort and we put together our best effort. Um, the DC Circuit upheld it the Supreme Court of the United States, and eventually, many, many years later, uh, found that the process was was insufficient, and that's the Boumediene case, um, as as you know, Senator. Um, but to say that there was no process would be inaccurate too, because the Detainee Treatment Act had a long list of prescribed processes, and the question just simply was whether they were adequate enough under the suspension clause, and that was a close case that divided the court very closely. Um, and I respect that decision as a president of the United States Supreme Court, no less than any other senator. One last question on sure. this. When President Bush signed the Detainee Treatment Act, he issued a statement that basically said he would only construe the law consistent with his powers as Commander-in-Chief. According to press reports, administration officials confirmed, and I quote, the president intended to reserve the right to use harsher methods in special situations involving national security, end quote. In other words, the signing statement reflected the president's belief that he had the power to not comply with the law he had just signed. According to emails, and this you'll verify, you were involved in preparing that signing statement and you advocated for the issuance of the signing statement. They even showed you saying to the top State Department lawyer that Harry Ma Harriet Myers, the White House counsel, quote, needs to hear from us. Otherwise, this may wind up going the wrong way. Well, Senator, I can tell you what I recall. I haven't read, okay. I need to read the email, That's but my, my, my loose recollection of something that happened, I think, 11, 12 years ago, 
uh, is that uh, there there were um, uh, individuals in, in maybe the vice president's office who wanted a more aggressive signing statement along the lines that you've described, and that there were uh, others, including at the State Department, who wanted a gentler signing statement. Um, and my recollection sitting here, as best I can give it to you without studying the email, is that I was in the latter camp. Um, John Bellinger, among others, I would have associated myself with there. And I don't know what was in the president's head when he wrote the signing statement. I, I can't tell you that. I don't know. I can only tell you what I remember, and I certainly would never have counseled anyone that they could disobey the law. Okay, I have no reason not to believe you, but if you will read those, sure. and then in my second round, uh, we'll go back to sure. it, and I'd be very happy to, uh, um, because I think you'll see that we didn't make this up. Um, I, I'm, I'm, well, Senator, I'm okay. not suggesting you are, but 